Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? I've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. The picture that you're looking at right now is a picture of the 2010 World Cup roster for the United States. And what you'll see is that uh, of the 23 players selected, they come from 22 separate clubs. The second picture is Spain's roster, who ended up winning the 2010 World Cup. And what you'll notice about their roster is that their roster is made up of eight clubs, including seven from Barcelona and five from Real Madrid. Now, in 2010, we had Bob Bradley. So now we bring in a German, we bring in Jurgen Klinsmann, and you're thinking, oh, you know what? Maybe they looked at this and then decided, you know what? Maybe the United States needs to go down the same path. Let's look at... Jurgen Klinsmann's roster in 2014. Jurgen Klinsmann went down the same path as Bob Bradley, and our roster in 2014 was comprised of players from 20 clubs. But something's got to give. I mean, so what, what did Germany's roster look like in 2014? Well, theirs was 11. So a little bit higher than Spain's. And they had seven from Bayern Munich and four from Borussia Dortmund. But in their final, they were made up of three clubs. Their starting lineup in the, in the World Cup final was made up of three clubs. You're probably yelling at your computer screens or your cell phones saying, Jason, we're not Spain. Jason, we're not, we're not Germany. We're not Portugal. We're not whatever. Okay. Well, let's let me get this point across very clear. In 2013, we saved Mexico's butts by beating Panama so that Mexico could finish fourth and have to go to New Zealand and play a home and home uh, to get into the World Cup. So, what does their coach do? Their coach comprises a roster of only 14 players of only 14 players from five clubs including a starting lineup made up of only three they end up beating New Zealand five to one in the first leg and this, making the second leg not even mean anything. Now, going into a do or die situation to qualify for Russia, the 2018 World Cup, what does Bruce Arena do? Bruce Arena was brought in to qualify. First and foremost, to qualify. I just gave you three prime examples of international soccer and how it tends to pick rosters made up of players from as few clubs as possible. So, in this do-or-die situation, what does Bruce Arena do? He names a roster of 25 players from 22 clubs. Last but not least... In the game against Trinidad and Tobago and against Panama, our starting lineup, which was the same in both games, comprised of 10 different clubs on the field. This is like back in the day when high school soccer was a big deal. The best high schools had kids all from the same club team that went on to play at the same high school. So if your high school team was comprised of two or three club teams, you're going to be pretty good because there's continuity. When you had 11 or 9 or 10 different club teams represented, you weren't going to be very good. 
and that's how the U.S. national team is. I can't believe nobody's figured this out in terms of roster composition.